We're now in our next video in the foundation and the history of mathematics. And we're here now in the history of mathematics 1 um, in the part 2. So we're done with part 1. Um, try to check the video um, of part 1 before following or before watching this one. So we're going to look at the number systems and rules of arithmetic of two of the great ancient civilizations. First is we're going to look at Egypt, okay, in this video. And then in the next video, we're going to look at Babylonia. Okay, so we're going to focus here first with the um, with the country Egypt. Egypt is found in North Africa and one of the most populous countries in the world right now. So it is one of the world's oldest civilizations. Okay, so the ancient world was from about 3000 to 300 BCE, that's including Egypt, during which this civilization had, it, had, had agriculture, writing, and a number system. Okay, so the thing that made Egypt flourish is because of the Nile River. It's the settled area of Egypt. It's, not, it's a narrow strip of land <clears throat> along the shores of the Nile River. So Egypt would not be possible without the waters and the gifts of the Nile. Okay, it is an insular and protected country. It's because of Egypt's isolation from possible invaders that it was able to develop into a stable, prosperous, and um, successful country through agriculture. This is because the Nile River is a predictable one. The Nile River flooded every year in July, so it's very critical for for Egyptians to to have this month and have this time because the 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 water okay the agriculture I mean the the farms okay the agriculture needs water and and the Nile is predicted to have this flood every July so the floods provided rich nutrients and silt that made the soil okay, for their agriculture very much productive okay also farmers and scribes have of this um, or flourished here in Egypt. Egypt subsisted on organized and centralized farming in the area, flooded annually every July by the Nile. So tracking and managing the allocation of land required the extensive road record keeping and written language. So that's the purposes of the main purposes of farmers and scribes. So in when it comes to written language, we know that there is a famous writing language in Egypt that is the hieroglyphics. So things like this. Okay, a hier hieroglyphics is a is a language or a written um, written uh, language created by Egypt, which is uh, in forms of pictures, which is a pictorial writing system um, that Egypt uh, created. Uh, this particular hieroglyphics that you see here is found um, on the entrance of the Great Pyramid at Giza. Okay, also they use it in ceremonial writing. So hieroglyphics were used for permanent messages. As you, as you can see, it is carved on stones, on walls, on this kind of monument likewise. So some were carved inscriptions on monuments and buildings, and others were painted on inside the walls of buildings and tombs. Um, we have a less, a less famous writings in Egypt, like, uh, such as the Heretic. So for everyday use, we use this. Uh, they use this, rather. This is a script form. Uh, of hieroglyphics which evolved okay we called it again hieratic okay this is um particular this, heretic, this particular hieratic is from a letter written about 1790 okay so we use this because um when you when you use when you write it in a script so it's going to be kind of kind of challenging if you're going to write uh, hieroglyphics on a script so um, instead of of, of of writing those in pictures um they evolved it into writing these erratics. So they used papyrus rolls, as famously note. Um, Egyptians were, were once one of those who first used or have this technology of using paper. Egyptians developed a sort of paper made from the pith of the papyrus reeds growing on the side of the Nile. So these were made into long strips um, and then rolled and unrolled for use. So we can see from that papyrus rolls, um, we have this called the Egyptian technology. Egyptian know-how reflected their beliefs and needs, and many inventions, devices, and procedures were supported, um, supported their system of agriculture and the buildings of their many monuments. So they're very much advanced in their time. We also have this cult of death um, from the pharaohs, the tombs, and the pyramids. Much attention was paid 
to preparation for death and the life that would that would uh, that would follow after death um pharaohs and other important officials spent great sums of t sums of money on their tombs and the preparation of their bodies we call that mummification okay for and for their entry into their afterlife so the the tombs of pharaohs are very much very much um popular and very much you know grand um they are they are put inside the pyramids uh, most famous were the pyramids built as tombs for our great pharaohs so the great pyramids contain as many as 2,300,000 limestone blocks each weighing 2.5 tons okay and not only here um egypt also flourished in the in the field of practical science topics that would later be that would that would be part of science were studied and mastered for practical ends okay this is because of egyptians like for example anatomy okay for embalming embalming and mummification so um we know that that egypt used mummification so this is used in anatomy why is it um why is the bodies preserved so chemistry for making cosmetics they use that paints dyes and food preservatives well, one one fact is that when when um, archaeologists open this this tombs in in the pyramid um they they see some honey there and then those honeys are still edible okay so meaning um how 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 did how did um these egyptians did that and astronomy for establishing a calendar for agriculture so we know that that they have this annual flooding of the nile every july so it's it's a need for for egyptians to create their calendar for agriculture so going to astronomy Egyptian astronomy the flooding of the nile is so regular that it, it coincides with an astronomical event that is when the star sirius um, we named it right now appeared in the sky just before dawn the flooding on the Nile was imminent. So this is very much um, predictable. Every time Sirius appears in the sky, so the flooding will be will be will immense. So hence we have the Egyptian calendars in which they need, okay, when they are when they're checking for for the time when it will flood. So the beginning of the year was when the Nile was predicted to flood, that is every July. So that's in their calendars in Egyptian ancient Egyptian calendars july is the first month of their calendars like most calendars there were uh there were there was some coordination of the cycle of the sun and the moon so we will look at first the earliest egyptian calendar so the, this calendar had 12 months alternating 29 and 30 days of course it's not accurate the actual cycle of the moon is 29 and a half days the year was therefore three five four days which is lacking from our calendar today so every two or three years an additional month was added just to compensate with the number of days and then so that their their flooding of the Nile will not be flood lost. So with this earliest ancient Egypt calendar, they need to update this into a second Egyptian calendar, which is more accurate, more precise, in order for them not to, to get lost when will the Nile be flooded. So they had this three six five day year, which is more more and more um Accurate. Uh, sp um, specifically, it's 365 and, and one fourth days, right? That's why we have a leap year every four, four years because that one fourth accumulates into one day. So all months were 30 days long, which is used in approximate time and only in business math. Um, then an extra five days was added at the end. So this calendar worked better for tracking the solar year, but the coordination with the moon cycle was lost. Okay, I was lost if this has happened. And we will also, with this calendar, we have seasons uh, in Egypt. The year was divided into three seasons as suited as what is important. First, we have the inundation, which is the flooding of the Nile, the first part of their calendar. We have the emergence of the crops. And then after the emergence of the crops, we will be harvesting. And after the harvesting, it will go back again to the flooding of the Nile in which they need to, to um, they need the, the, the water and the, the gift of the Nile. Now with this, um, let's go into the Egyptian numbers right now. Okay, so in in Egypt they have they have um, created a system of writing numbers, emerge from this hieroglyphic system that they have for writing. So a number was written as a picture of its components. So the base of a number was ten. Okay, like ours, it's decimal, but the notation was completely different. All right, it, the, the notation is completely different. So i'm going to show you the notation system of the egyptians we have this so we have one here as a stroke 
we have 10 as the heel bone so okay it looks like a a uh an inverted u a hundred is a scroll or some call it superb um what a thousand is a lotus flower um there's a lot of 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 illustrations for lo lotus flowers some would draw it simply like this um for it to become a lotus flower some would have it something like uh this and then there has there's some something below some some would say that it's a lotus flower but it doesn't doesn't matter we know as much as we know that it's a lotus flower you have the pointy finger so tell them others will make it really a hard pointy finger we have a fish or a tadpole some would write it as this okay the common writing uh, as we write the fish um we have then the astonished man either here as you can see the man is praising um disguise there some would only draw it as a, as a stick figure man so depends on the book and we have the rising sun for 10 million okay a million for the top sure. man and ten thousand for the rising sun so each power of 10 had a separate symbol so we have one ten a hundred a thousand ten thousand a hundred thousand a million and ten million the order in which the symbols of a number was written was not important for Egyptians. That is, there's no place value. As much as, or as long as you can see the, those pictures um, written somewhere there, it will add up to the value of the number. So, for instance, we can see these examples here. So, we can see two scrolls. This is equal to 200. All right. We can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We have 7 um heel bones so seven heel bones is equal to 70. and we have one two three four five six we have six strokes that is equal to six so add them up it's going to become 276 all right okay let's have this example as you can see this is this is still a lotus flower so we have four lotus flowers so that's four thousand okay we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six scrolls. That's uh, six hundred. Okay. We have uh, two, one, two, two hill bones. That's gonna give us twenty. And we have two strokes, which is going to give us two. So that's four thousand six hundred twenty-two, which is correct over here. Okay. So. Um, when it comes to writing in, in, in Egyptian language, I have another video for that. Um, but you can see that in this um, example, okay, um, the, the, the order is not really this it's not really important. I mean we can I can draw the strokes above and then it will not it will not alter actually the, the value of the number because strokes mean one. Okay, scrolls mean a hundred, fishes means a hundred thousand. So in whatever um, place order you write it, it doesn't really matter because th the value is intact. Okay, the values yeah, the values are intact. So we're going to also look at on how Egyptians write it, um, fractions. Um, in Egypt, all fractions represented a single part of a larger whole. That is, it's only a unit fractions for us. So, like for example, a third and a, and one fifth, as written as above. This is an example. So the symbol for a fraction was to place an open mouth above the denominator okay so this is an open mouth even though it looks it looks like a nahe okay so this these are the lips here and we have a one third we have here a one fifth okay so again all fractions in in egypt are in a form of unit fractions or a single part of a larger whole so we also have since we know that there is a hieratic writing in egypt um there are also heretic numbers okay that emerged so the number system was cumbersome as you can see uh, there it you need a lot of, of of writing and drawing in order to finish a, a number like 9099 right so and one more thing um the maximum number of of of, of pictures or hieroglyphics or or hieroglyphs that you can draw using that number system of Egypt is only nine because beyond nine you will go to the next number system which requires you to draw it once so a shorthand version was developed for the use of heretic but the erratic version has even more symbols with it and still no place value so which is kind of more confusing so one two three ten twenty 
um, 30, um, 100, 200, and 300 all were separate symbols. So you can see here, 1, 2, 3, and then um, it goes on and on. Um, you can you can notice that 9, you don't need to write 9 strokes, but instead you're going to draw this. Um, if you're going to draw 9,000, you're not going to draw 9 lotus flowers. Instead, you're going to draw this. Okay, so I think this is the best time to end the video now. In the next video, I'm going to present to you Egyptian arithmetic on how to um, how to multiply and divide um, numbers the way our ancient um, Egyptians did them. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope that you would like and subscribe.